your g'day curd nerds welcome back to another episode of ask the cheese man this is episode nine or session nine now we've got one single question here today and it's from uh fatty on and fatty on's from albania and it took me about five maybe six five or six emails back and forth uh to figure out what was actually wrong so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you the short version, um, but it's quite interesting. Um, it, it often takes me, you know, I do these question ask answer sessions basically for free. You know, I provide them as entertainment and I do put a lot of work into these things. So I do pride myself on getting the answer correct and helping the, the cheese maker in whatever issue um, that they're having. Um, having said that, I didn't expect this to go back and forth for five or six times. Anyway, so let's get on with what uh, Fadion um, asked. So Fadion says, hello and thanks for your video. Um, I only knew that cheese could be coagulated with lemon juice, but your videos have opened up a whole new world of cheese to me. Uh, I'm now in my third batch with basically the same results so I would appreciate some tips on getting raw cow's milk from a trusted farmer. Just a couple of hours ago, I used 1.5 litres of milk, heated up a simmer and let it cool. When it reached about 38 Celsius, I added half a tablespoon of recently bought liquid animal rennet, covered the pot with a thick cloth and let it rest for an hour. The milk did coagulate, but it's very soft. Tried the finger test, but it's nowhere as firm as in your videos. I uh, cut it in one centimeter cubes and immediately after stirring, they broke into tiny pieces. The same thing has happened with the other two batches. So I know I'm missing something. I want to try to do some bigger batches, try some culture or even get a wine cooler for aging, but I'm messing up even with such a simple cheese. Uh, some ideas would really help. Thanks a lot. So in between there was some to and fro. Now initially I thought there was something to do with acidification because there was no mention of adding a starter culture or anything like that. Um, because when the milk's not adequ adequately acidified, the rennet won't set. So that was my initial diagnosis. Um, however, there was an email where uh, Fadion mentioned that um, they did something after boiling the milk. So here's my response here. Hi Fadion, did you say you boil the milk first? Question mark. Did you mention, you didn't mention that in your first email, I just assumed you heated it. If you do boil the milk, then that will be the issue. Boiling breaks down the protein structure of the milk and makes it almost in impossible to get a good firm curd set. Let me know if that's the case. Um, however, if you want to make your milk safe, then use the low temperature, long hold pasteurization method, uh, better known as LTLH. Uh, heat your milk to 58 to 68 Celsius or 135 to 155 Fahrenheit and hold it for a full 30 minutes. Then cool it down to the target temperature for cheese making. Now, if you want to store the milk uh, beforehand, heat it down to four degrees Celsius really quickly um, using an ice water bath around the pot that you just uh, heated the milk up in. This pasteurization method is prefer preferred because it doesn't kill as much of the bacterial, beneficial bacterial enzymes in the milk and it uh, increases the flavor of the milk. So that's um, low temperature, long hold pasteurization. Now don't forget to add your calcium chloride before adding um, the rennet to get a really good curd set. So uh, Fadian's reply was, uh, hi Gavin, I was thinking that I may haven't mentioned that. Yes, I do boil the milk for safety. Although I source it through a trusted farmer, the cows aren't free ranging, which is impossible to find here. I just made a batch with raw milk and it turned out perfect. 
with a strong curd that held its shape even after 10 minutes of stirring. I don't know why I tried, I didn't try raw milk before instead of boiling and blaming my technique. Thanks a lot for your LTLH suggestion. And I'll definitely try it that way. Many thanks, Fadian. So there you have it. Whatever you do in cheese making, if you're sourcing raw milk, please don't boil it first and then attempt to make cheese. Because basically what you're doing is the same as ultra pasteurization. Uh, you're killing the protein structure in the milk. Um, very similar to what they do with um, UHT milk. Uh, they basically flash heat it uh, and then flash cool it. Uh, flash heat it past boiling point and flash cool it. Um, but you would have seen that in one of the previous Ask the Cheese Man videos. So there you have it. It took me a while to diagnose. I had to think about it, but uh, I certainly did not um, uh, stop trying to figure out what was wrong. So it's questions like these um, that certainly make my day when I get them right and I get an answer back from the, the recipient who uh, says it all worked out for them. Uh, so keep the emails coming in. Don't forget that you can leave it via a comment um, on my YouTube channel. So in the discussion tab uh, of the channel, which is uh, cheeseman.tv. Uh, so please do that. I've got no issues with that at all. Or shoot them through to um, go to littlegreencheese.com uh, and you can ask a question in the contact me page. Um, so they're the two preferred methods. Uh, uh, so I don't have to go digging for questions that people are asking. I do have one other ask though. Don't ask the question super urgently like you're halfway through a cheese session because Australia's quite a way away from most of the places where uh, you actually watch these videos. And I'm usually in bed when you're asking your question and making your cheese. So I won't get to you in time. Uh, I'm not like the uh, emergency department of a hospital. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so I have had a few of those um, requests recently. Please don't do that because I can't guarantee a response. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Now you can uh, check out a cheese that you do boil the milk in um, and it does work and it's called paneer. So you can check out that cheese just here. Uh, don't forget that you can get all of the ingredients uh, for cheese making equipment, supplies and some kits uh, over at littlegreenworkshops.com.au. Well, thanks for watching Curd Nerds and I'll see you next time.